Data validation is a tool within Excel that allows you to control what is input into a cell and it's very useful in stopping accidental errors. So you have a series of examples. So the first one we've got, we've got to capture a salesperson. You'll see we've got a department. We want to do some budgeting. We want to know what date they're going to do it by with their cell phone number and the ID number. But we don't want this to be completely free entry. What we want is that it's controlled what can or can't go in. So as an example, the first thing we want to do is here's a list of names, but this list of names should be based on the approved list over here. So they can't spell it any differently than these. So a nice easy way to do it. We highlight those cells. Under data, you'll see there's an item called data validation. And when I click on it, this pops up. What this is saying is at the moment these highlighted cells allow any value. But there's a whole bunch of options and we're going to cover some of these. So in this case, I can see I've got a list. So I want to use a list to decide what people can use. The source of the list, one way you can do it is to link to an existing source. So I'm going to go click here and highlight that list over there. When I say OK, what you'll see now is when I click on a cell, a little drop down box appears. So I can now, if I click on that drop down box, you'll see my list of approved names appears and I can change it, for example, to that. I can type it and as long as I type it correct, there'll be no problem. But if I accidentally, let's say use a double A there, when I click enter, Excel immediately warns you that what you're trying to do doesn't match this list and so would you like to retry and obviously we can say retry and then it works. Now before we look at some of the other options I just want to show you something else you can do here. So again I've highlighted it, data, data validation, we've got our list, all that's fine. You'll notice here you actually have the ability to give the user a personalized input message. So I could put a title and then I can type something like, please choose from the list. You can also give a personalized error alert. So at the moment this has been set up to stop and the error message is going to be something similar. So we're going to say you need to choose from the list. So when I say OK, whenever you click on a cell, you'll see now you've got your own little message. And if I come here and I accidentally try and enter something wrong, you'll see it says you need to choose from the list. So this is our personalized message and we can click retry or cancel. So I'm just going to say cancel. That was a stop message, but there actually is another version. So I'm going to go back in here and under error alert, I can actually say rather give them a warning and the warning might be oh, are you sure that is the correct spelling so when I say okay now pretty much the same thing but now when I go and enter double N it asks you are you sure that is the correct spelling if you say no, then you'll retype it. But if you say yes, it actually allows it to go in. So it breaks the rule about that list. So you just need to decide what is or isn't allowed. Let's now look at some of the other things you can do. So for example, these people come from departments. I want to enter department. But in this case, when I go to data validation and go to settings, I'm going to tell it it's a list. This is a very simple list. I don't have another list that I need here. I can manually go and if I put my list items separated by a comma, when I say OK, you'll see now those items appear there. So it's quite useful for things like yes, no type answers. Perhaps you now want to control 
that they need to enter what they expect they're going to sell but the minimum number they can enter is a 5 and the maximum a 25. So let's highlight that, we go to data validation. So one of the items here is you want to control whether the input should be a whole number or a decimal. So it could be a decimal, perhaps they can sell 10.5 of something. But we're going to control it, we're going to say put in a whole number. And notice when you choose that, you can choose must the whole number be between, not between, equal to, not equal to, etc. We're going to say between, we're going to say a minimum of 5 and a maximum of 25. When I say OK, nothing looks like it's changed. If I come here and make this person sell 6, no problem. If I try to sell 4, however, we get a warning. And again, you could have put a personalized warning to say something like the minimum is 5, the maximum is 25. Now let's look at two other things you can do. So firstly, control what dates are entered. And also, instead of like here, where we physically typed in the 5 and 25 into data validation, we can actually look at other cells. So what we want to know is when will people sell these units by, and those are the dates we want to control for. Under data, data validation, we can go here, and you'll see there's an item called date. Again, you can choose between, not between, bigger than, etc. But instead of typing in the date, we're now going to say that's the start date. I'm just going to put my dollar signs on. That's the end date. Put my dollar signs on. And I can say OK. Notice that we had dates already in there. Data validation doesn't check after the fact. So it hasn't gone and checked that these dates are wrong. However, if someone now enters something, it will identify it. So if we go here, we now enter date, so let's enter validate 2016-01-31. When I click enter, no problem, Excel allows it. If however this person's a bit cheeky and they want to say they'll only get it next year, so let's do 2017-01-31. When you click enter, it'll warn you that that's not possible. You have, and again, you can put in your own message to say it must be between this date and that date. So you can control that. Where this is also useful is if someone accidentally enters a date in such a way that Excel doesn't recognize it as a date. So for example, put the word soon. And it says, no, that's not a, a proper date. So it's quite a useful way to make sure that whatever's entered is actually a valid Excel date. You can also control for the text length. So for example, we've got a company approved three letter initial for each person. What we don't want is some people entering their full name, some people doing two letters, etc. So I can highlight it, data, data validation, and you'll see one of the options here is something called text length. And when I choose text length, again, it can be between, not between, etc. So in this case, I'm going to say it must be equal to exactly three characters. When I say OK, if I come here and I enter three letter initial, no problem. If I try enter two initials, won't allow it. If I try enter more initials, maybe the full name, won't allow it. So you can easily control that what is put in here matches exactly what was requested. And that becomes extremely important for things like cell phone numbers and ID numbers. So over here we want to enter a cell phone number and you can see we've been very specific. It must be entered with plus two seven country code and then the rest of the number, no spaces. So that's exactly 12 characters, data validation, text length. It must be equal to exactly 12 characters. So now when someone inputs it, if as long as they input Like that, no problem. If when they're inputting they forget perhaps to put the country code, you'll see it will warn them. If they accidentally, so they get the country code right, and accidentally they click the 7 twice, 
they'll immediately be warned about it. So this just makes sure that as much as possible what's entered here has got as limited finger problems as possible. Similar with ID numbers, ID numbers sometimes are a very set number of spaces. So in South Africa it's 13 characters. So we can specify that the data validation must have a text length equal to 13. And now if someone enters their ID number correctly, no problem. If they accidentally enter too many numbers, you immediately get a message, which means that hopefully the per person capturing it immediately checks, gets it right, and you don't have situations where weeks or months down the line you're now trying to figure out what this person's ID number is.